Mrs. Lawson won't want that. No, she won't, will she? <laughs> I bought them up to where you. They were on the bloody doorstep this morning. I took them out across the allotments. She was bothering the kids. You've lost this place, Mary, you know? No, we haven't. It's a symbol now. It says bed bastards whenever it's up and running. Yeah, well, they are. We know that. It's not going to help these mums and kids, though, is it? You've handed it to them in a plate of oh, honest mail. Well, I'll resign. You won't get the chance. They're going to kick you out of the party altogether. I'll be completely on my own then, just what they want. Well, I'll blow this bloody place up then and me in it. It's bad politics, Mel. It's not about personalities, it's about people. It's about every other bugger but us. We don't count. Those bent bastards on the council don't count. We don't mix politics with personal animosities because that is their little game. And if we get into the bath with them, we won't have anything to offer anybody. And what about the next lot of cuts, eh? And what about the lost services? They're out to destroy local government, the Tories. It's not just this nursery. And we've got to resist, Lou. Everybody. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm all this shit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was a stupid thing to do. You all right? Yeah! Yes! Five, two, five, two. Ah. I didn't think you'd approve of video games. Depends. Depends on the game, depends on the kid. You wouldn't let him have a walk. Yeah, well, I thought listening and talking to us was more important. Are you moving back here then, Dad? I'll be nearby, Tom. I'll see you most days. Do you want a cup of tea? Yeah, lovely. Can you give me a hand? What's wrong? I was wondering. We were wondering, this new job, will it make any difference to our money? No. That's a relief. And you're, uh, you're stopping with Mel? Yeah, for the time being, till I sort myself out. You could have stopped here, you know. Yeah. I don't think that would have been a very good idea. She's in trouble. Your friend. Yeah. I've had the press round here offering money. You haven't said anything, have you? You're not asking me to show her any sympathy. Not that cow. Have you seen her since she's been back? No. You're not moving in with her. If you do, I'm warning you, Phil. We need that nursery. You don't. They might. Are you trying to say something, councillor? You can take it whichever way you want. You dog shit, you. Now, hang on, lass. Leave her. Let her rave. Look, most of the women who use that nursery are sole wage earners. All they're cuts single are parents or they're stuck with ex-minors whose redundancy is running Don't out. Don't lecture me about minors. Unlike you, Kev, with no council job to fall back on, those women lose that nursery, they lose their jobs. You should be screaming and shouting at the government, not us. But you're doing their dirty work, comrade. Yes, well, uh, talking of dirty work... A right bloody mess. Your friend, who is also one of this constituency's full-time workers, has been playing a blinder for the Tories today. Again? He's been on radio smearing members of this council. There's another complaint gone in. If you're going after her, you're going to have me to contend with. You won't want to defend her on this one, I'm sure. I haven't spoken to her. I've no idea what you're on about. I think she's flipped, frankly. 
I back her completely. We will. We will. We're getting a lot of feedback on Lou's profile already. You're not kidding. It's very positive, actually. She's seen as a victim. I've been on location. The response is very encouraging. Yes. Is it? Haven't we been down this road before? Private polling, positive responses. And in the privacy of the polling booth, all those unreasonable fears and prejudices that we thought we'd seen off re-emerge. It's not helping this, Don. Why so negative? Because she's the wrong person. There's been all this stuff in the papers. There's a mate going off at the deep end with wire cutters. We've got a PR disaster in the offing. I know what I'm doing, Don. The media's under control. It's doing what we want. There's something personal going on here, Don. I don't care for it. Rubbish. She's been in local leaders' office up in her constituency, banging on the table, threatening this body and that body. She's backing up her mate, who's going around smearing good socialists with years of service to the party behind them. Good socialists? Where have we heard that before? I'm here because I've been elected. What's your excuse? Think on you. What happens to Monkey when Organ Grand has been run over by bus? OK. I'll give you the alternative party political. Take an average Labour council, a dump, collective noun, of white, middle-aged males, overweight, all smoking, all with that peculiar arrogance that invariably accompanies civic life in Labour authorities. This macho... You're out of order, Kay. I can make this film, Don. I'm the bought-in help. I take my instructions from you. And unlike you, I don't have any internal party electorate to placate, no games to play to keep my place at the table, just a job to do. And the question I have to ask is, how do we sell this party to women over 35? Absolutely. This project will be a major asset to the party. And I'm not about to lose it because of some grudge match being fought out in a northern backwater. Nuclear free, then, this is it. Uh, hello. Oh, yes, yeah, some of us still cling to the old romantic notions. <laughs> Bye. You're looking good. So are you. <laughs> Here, present. Simi Sonoma from the north of San Francisco. Tell them along. You read wine books in there, do you? Oh, not only just wine books. Come on. We'll sit down. Time for a drink. It's a bit early, isn't it? I'm an old man. Indulge me. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm writing my political memoirs. Life deep in the mire of local government, where the real politic gets sorted. <laughs> I've out-collected Ben himself, I reckon. <laughs> to the revolution. The revolution. I heard Mel on radio this morning. Oh, I was there. Mm. They'll expel her now. They've wanted to for a long time. Lose their main target, and they'll do it through Mel. They're yeah, quite clever for them. <laughs> They've always been good on low cunning. If we're going to save Mel, we need to find evidence that she's telling the truth. Easier said than done. But not impossible. Mm. You should have been around in the 70s when they turned Paulson over. The great corrupter. <laughs> and they only scratched the surface. A lot of politicians sweating over that case. Things are a lot tighter now. Don't delude yourself, Phil. No, the networks still operate. And many of the same old faces are around in public life. More subtle? More careful. The bathroom suites are delivered at midnight and not in council vans. What we have to find out to start with is evidence of association. We need every Clayton connection before and after the leisure development. Every planning permission, every land sale. It'll be in here somewhere, or in library. No time like the present. <laughs> no. You're looking for the time the politicians have recommended against the advice of their officers. 
and check who was at the meetings. <laughs> I've known Wilkinson turn up when the business was to all intents and purposes, nothing to do with him. He wasn't on the committee, wasn't in his area, but he'd be there holding his hand up. <laughs> the man behind the leisure centre, Clayton, was once a small builder. His first contract, housing repairs. Chairman of housing, Norman Wheeler. When Wheeler moved to chair planning, Clayton moved to buy land. Green belts were ignored and plans redrafted. We found 47 iffy committee rulings in favour of Clayton, pushed through by Wheeler. Oh, both of them must have made a fortune. I heard that old Sir Arthur Mildred been digging around. He's asking to see some old plans now at the library. You know, early stuff. What do you reckon he's up to? I don't know. What you got to hide? He's up to summit anyway. And Spencer's in that as well. Oh. Thought he'd chuffed off to America, broken heart to bollock or something. He's back. He's back and I'm worried. I don't mind admitting. I worry it's too much. Mm. I hate a panic, huh? I have thought of resigning. They aren't listening, are they? They put me off game. It's all right for you, isn't it? You're in the clear. It's your own fault for being such a sordid little lady. Never could say no, could you? Got a clean suit of clothes on you. Forget what you do for a living and stack profit from other people's miseries. Yeah, hate insurance men, don't you? <laughs> hey, I'm going to house the Lord's dirty honours. What's the thing to that? I'm delighted for you, George. Because I know where that is going. Armly. That's where they're going. <laughs> is he a mason? Of course he is. And I've nothing against them, but they do seem to keep cropping up in these sorts of messes. Anne Wheeler and Wilkinson and Douglas? Probably. And you're telling me the leisure centre's in the ship before it even opens? They're selling land for cash. Can't be for anything else unless you know of a new building programme. God, I wish I did. You need to warn Lou. Can we use this at my hearing? I think the threat of unravelling it all in public should be enough. Luke, we really need Lou's support. She'll be there. <clears throat> I'm going down to see her tonight. Does she know you're coming? I'll leave a message. I'll, I'll wait outside till she gets back. Got a key. Oh. 953 men work this pit. It's very natural. Easy. And I work the canteen. You know, usual stuff. Sausage. Stuff lads can burn up. Well, it's all gone now. 2,000 pints of milk a day. And we were a profitable pit. That's what gets me. To think I bought electricity shares. At the risk of offending Don Talbot, I'd say it was feminine. Well, I'm not political. This government, what they've done to this area, they He's should still causing a fuss. Up, that's what I think. Couldn't organise it. Oh, you know what I mean. In a bloody brewery. What a waste. What a shaming waste. It's not just Don, actually. We do have a problem. It's your friend again. First, the nursery school business. Now these wild allegations she's been making about some ancient local politicians. Stephen, can't you make her back off? She's not helping anybody. She's certainly not helping you. She's been pushed into this, you know that, don't you? They've got her up in a disciplinary hearing. She's facing near certain expulsion. It's being orchestrated. Maybe. Not maybe, John. She's been deliberately set up, provoked. Somebody has to call them off. What is it anyway? Is it just 
backhanders? We've known for years that some of the old guard were hand in glove with local developers. It's more than that, though. It's a political culture. Well, can she prove corruption? Do we want her to? What would it achieve? Outside confirming a well-established popular prejudice about Labour politicians. You must start thinking about your own career. <laughs> well, you smile. But if you want to get anywhere, you have to think that way. If you get a reputation for taking on local politicians, some of whom are well-known, even loved, if you get that kind of reputation, you could well be the darling of the constituencies, but to all practical purpose, you're finished. All that intelligence, all that ability is gone for nothing. And if there's litigation on top, it could cost the party thousands. Ah. You could go all the way. I've always thought that. Oh, George Douglas is going to the Lords anyway. I see. Look, for me, it's about political integrity. It's why I joined. Come on, Lou. Mel is what the Labour Party might become. Oh, God help us. She's straight. Nobody doubts her word. If we're trying to overcome deep-rooted distrust, it's more Mel's we need, not less. The life and soul of the party. I owe her a lot. Then you owe it to her to succeed. You got a license for that thing? You don't have missiles fitted. What for? Speed of firing. Ball? Hey, I'm motorized. Hello. I might see some Andy stairs. What are you doing upsetting Norman Wheeler? He needs upsetting his bent. Ah, oh, he is. Andy's having a go at me. So he's got to expect it back. They never do. It's always a surprise. Why did you line up with him? You were on left once. Why did you go over? I needed the little shit smokes. Why does anybody do anything in politics? To be an MP? Alright. To beat Arthur. It was him or me. Could have gone closer than I wanted. So I did a deal with Wheeler. That's sad. Nay, lass. That sad one. Now then. Now then. 
you fancy a bomb clutch number? <laughs> well, come on, you bloody old chuff. <sighs> I'm pissed. I'll not tell anybody. <laughs> Bad, bad, bad day. Do you love me no more? Haven't I got anything to rely on? Nothing to look forward to in my old age. Keeping you up, have we? It's circumstantial. A lot of it. I don't argue with that. Or with its basic thesis, you know that. It wouldn't stand up in a court. The police wouldn't touch it. I don't agree. The only way to deal with this is through the party. Oh, you're joking, aren't you? No, I'm not. Look, you're talking about some old buggers who've creamed the odd bit off here and there down the years. They're equivalent of free phone calls, postage, the game everybody else plays. And you forget, these guys have a history in the movement. They shared long forgotten battles, they're from a different age. So? The party is not renowned for its defence of whistleblowers. And George Douglas is off to the Lord's will, the other old scoundrels. Oh, dear Lou, this is sad. It's an enormous risk going public on it. It would be an own goal to attack a Labour council at a time like this, when we're fighting for the lives of our pit communities. You've sold out. Oh, don't be so bloody melodramatic. You're not back us, then? I'll be at the disciplinary hearing. I'll speak on Mel's behalf. This other business, I, I think, and I will say that the party should hand it over to an independent body for investigation. No doubt they'll find somebody independent enough to bury it. Tell Mel not to worry. She's not giving up, is she, Mel? She's pissed off. Now's not the time to pack it in. It's no one who'd step into my place if I went that keeps me going. Yeah, so true. Sorry about last night. That well, was good. It was always good. Maybe we should forget politics and just stick to that, eh? Won't happen again. Besides, I'm pregnant. You're not? Why not? Was it planned? No, I don't plan anything. When did I ever plan anything? What are you going to do about it? Keep it, struggle, cope. And what about the father? What about him? Yes, I know who it is. No, I don't want to share it with him. I won't tell him. Oh, it's madness. Yep, no reason to it. It's political suicide. It's not. It is, you're just chucking everything away. They talk like that. Everybody wants a piece of my life. Well, they can all piss off. You can piss off the tubes down there. Do you want to get married? Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> Look, I'll see you at the hearing. I think it's time to go and doorstop the ex-wife again. She'd clinch it. Offer more money. What about the People's Party? I think I'll wind John Sullivan up. I'm feeling evil. It still bloody rankles. Should have been you, George. Look on it as her tombstone. So what's the scene tomorrow? There'll be a panel of three. Me, Jonesy, and a regional block. Oh. 
We know who it is, and he's being sorted. It better be. What are you so worried about? I'm not worried. Kev puts the case for the Labour Group. And I've been sniffing around a bit myself. Poll tax non-payment, violence, talking to the press, disrupting meetings going way back. She's scarcely been out of paper. She, or someone on her behalf, puts her case. Cross-examination, both sides. We think about it, then we expel her for bringing a party into disrepute. So is doing her case. Spencer sent a note requesting a lawyer. We'll go that for a game of dominoes. Ground, eh? It'll do. Doesn't welcome women. Look at this steer. Everything Jesus about the place, wait. from the hours Rubbish, of work you look great. to the number of women's toilets, reminds us that it is a place designed by men for men. So, what's new? If architects had to change small children on a lavatory floor, don't you think that there would be a lot more changing rooms? If planners push prams across busy roads, there'd be a lot more drop curbs. Bit of a mouthful? Yeah, I think I'll just try to be more changing rooms. A word, Ms. Larson. John, what's wrong? What is it? Would you rather have wayward Lou to defend militant lady friend, or would you rather hear the story of you shacking up with former lover and boot boy? What you doing, Lou? What's your game? What are you on about, John? I've just had the editor of a national daily newspaper onto me. They have pictures of Lou and what's his name? Phil Spencer. He's back. You knew all about this, and you persuaded me she was the one to go ahead with. Come on, this man Spencer, notorious lefty, leaves his wife and two children for her. He picks a fight with her main rival and odds-on favourite, so she gets a clear run at the candidacy. He's back on the scene when she gets on the front bench. Chucked out of the States for political rebel rousing. Is it true? No. We've been set up. They're running the story tomorrow. It's not true. He was around last night, that's true. None of the rest. You get back on the phone, John. And you tell her it's so ludicrous that Lou's waiting for her to publish so she can clean up. You thank her for doing a great job in raising the profile of an MP whom we think is worth bringing to public notice. If this backfires on me, I'll finish you. I'll see to it personally. Your career could be in reverse. Hanging on by a thread here, just no more chances, Lou. Stay clear. Stay clear of all of them. I've got to be sick. All right, done. Tip top, comrade. Bloody tip top. <laughs> As the head. No. The silverwood next. Only malt be pit left soon. <laughs> Mark Bald. <laughs> She's not coming. Miss Larson has written to the NEC requesting an independent inquiry into all matters relating to this business. She's offered some names for consideration. Why is she coming? It's all I'm led to believe. She's not here yet. Well, can't wait any longer. Prepare for when she deigns to appear. Relax, like come this way. We're ready to start. Can I just say, at the outset, we're all comrades here today. For the time being. 
And I'd like to think we'll conduct our business with that in mind. Hi, Tom. Hello, Mrs. Spencer. I've got nothing to say to you. No. Inside, Tom. I think you should look at these photographs, Mrs. Spencer. Uh, they were taken yesterday morning as your ex-husband and Miss Larson left her London flat. They had spent the night together. I thought you were bloody iffy. Take a trip round the block. Uh, my editor would like to offer you a holiday, Mrs. Spencer. Well, you can't have had that many over the years since your husband left. Say to the value of two thousand pounds, plus the uh, the spending money we, we mentioned before. Can you just wait there a minute? Yeah. Um. Do you feel any bitterness, Mrs. Spencer? How do you feel this uh, stands up alongside the Labour Party's promise to support abandoned wives? Hey, it's Mum! This case against Councillor Lynch revolves around the accuracy, or otherwise, of the allegations that she has raised concerning the conduct of some senior councillors. Can I stop you there, comrade? We're not here today to investigate anyone other than Councillor Lynch, to discover whether she did, in fact, utter certain statements and whether those statements bring the party into disrepute. Oh, dear, it's a bloody fit-up. If her allegations are true... No, I'm sorry. I'm not here to try senior councillors. All I'm interested in is, did Councillor Lynch make certain statements that brought the party into disrepute? But if what she said was true... Which is why, grateful as I am for this interesting information, I can't admit it as part of the evidence. In the cup. Lynch. What happened? Miss Lynch. <laughs> She's been expelled. Um, it is true that leading Labour Party figures have received favours from local businessmen. What happens now? What happens now? We've lost a great member, and the Labour Party will get smaller and smaller till it breaks up into local fiefdoms, and we shall continue to lose elections. That's what happens now. A bag of chips. The press are stuffing their faces upstairs. I doubt whether many of them will make it. Well, they're going to miss a treat. One, two, one, two. Ladies and gentlemen. Well, who would have thought it? Looking round me now at all of this, this triumph of municipal enterprise. I wrote socialism here, but somebody's crossed it out. <laughs> I can only applaud the achievement of all the workers and the craftsmen who built it. When I first proposed to build this centre, I was against it, against the project. I wore jeans, I kept exhilarating company, and I thought that the intention of Labour politics 
was to succor the weak, help the poor, and fight for the oppressed. Well, I've been knocked into shape since that time. I've had my wardrobe sorted out. <laughs> and my policies, how should we put it? Sanitized. So, we are here today to celebrate the opening of this project. I believe that there were other priorities in 1987. In order to build this, we lost projects that were vital to the good health, the better health of our community. We should never have had to face that choice. The fact that we did was down to the excesses of Thatcherism. And I know I'm not supposed to be giving a political speech here today, but I'm going to be a naughty girl. Choices were made at that time that should never have been made. Choices by men in the main. Men who weren't inconvenienced by the consequent closure of schools or refuges for battered wives. But they wouldn't be, would they? Because Thatcherism was male, was guns and glory buildings before people. I don't want my child to be born into such an uncaring, violent, vicious world. A great socialist once said, the smallest he that is alive hath as great a right to live as the greatest he. Well, given the substitution of she for he, I endorse that as the new agenda. So I put you on notice. All those years ago when we marched and fought for our pit communities, for facilities and services, for the futures of our children, well, they are coming back. And this time, we won't be stopped. I declare this monument open. Lift for thee, George. If you wait long enough in our game, comrade, you see every bugger gone the same way. But do they, George? Is it really inevitable? Or is it just us? Please don't tell me, Arthur, Mel, and me have been barking up the wrong tree all these years.
The new screenplay series begins next Wednesday evening at 9 on BBC Two. And now, just ahead of Newsnight, here's a preview of what's in store. Screenplay, uncompromising drama for the new season on BBC Two. Award-winning journalist Mark Lawson makes his scriptwriting debut with The Vision Thing, a satirical comedy starring Richard Wilson and Derek Jacobi. James. We've got a problem with the Prime Minister. James. The fact is, the Prime Minister is seen God. Good snitching. Mm. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. Posh Brent, then. <laughs> we wanted to spend some time alone, so we made up some stories. It was a mistake. The end. Let's go. Yeah, but how did the car get in the river? <laughs> you know, something like this happened to friends of mine once. But that's only because they were in the car snogging and her foot hit the gear lever and... <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> You've had four years to plan this. And the best you could do was to sink the car. <laughs> I suppose it's a start. <laughs> wow! You really must have been at it! <laughs> oh, my God! Nothing happened. Well, then get back in that car until it does. <laughs> Look, this is not some sort of a seedy, sleazy thing going on here. Dad. I suppose we should have told you earlier. But Caroline and I... Are in love. Aww. Is this a trick? <laughs> it's true. Great! So how did it happen? Who said I love you first? Sit at the fair. Let's get to the point. When's the big day? Oh, oi, oi, this is exactly why we didn't tell you before. <sighs> I didn't want to put a lot of pressure on ourselves. We thought it'd be easier just to keep the whole thing private. I've found them. Here they are. <laughs> Action News reporting from the banks of the River Thames, where the victims of tonight's freak accident have just emerged from their car. And you are? <laughs> uh, Wilfred Gladstone. <laughs> 